Okay, so out of curiosity, what uh, what do you feel like you need to improve on now? Just being rusty. What uh, what what fell off? Um, bringing my own kind of. I mean, this this also applies to back then as well, I guess. But bringing my own style into it and like kind of trying to take things in like a more nomad direction rather than just being like a very kind of blanket cast, putting my own stamp on things is definitely something I've been working on this year a hell of a lot. And uh, trying to like do more with the play by play, you know, with those big explosive moments than just like I I, I feel like all the casters right now, at least in the in the tier two region, are just like trying to go fast, and I'm not a slave turn like i think at the start of the summer i did that charity event and like i got like you know a bunch of clips on reddit of like my my rap god casting and such and then i was like oh wow this is like my my stamp and started like kind of leaning into it a bit too much i think uh -huh. so i'm trying to like not lean into it so much and kind of use it as like uh something i can do you know it's, it's it's good in moments i think it's good in certain games but in other moments, it's not, you know, like, it, it, there needs to be variation there. So that's the two things I'm mostly focused on right now. Okay. Uh, you, you, did you watch the one that I did with Aries by chance? Uh, I caught bits of it, yeah. yeah okay, I okay, because I, I talked to him about that, e that exact thing, right? Uh, yeah, which is yeah, yeah, he said something very similar, yeah. Yeah, so um, I like the fact that you've already recognized that. Um, how, how confident would you say you are when you cast normally? Um, depends on the series, I guess. But, uh, you know, sometimes when it's like one of these games, like Nigma Navi, the nerves do sometimes get to me. But um, I've, I've kind of developed techniques to get over the kind of nervousness. So I'd say like maybe like a seven or eight out of ten for these kinds of games. Yeah. OK, that's um, that is something that I feel like whenever um, I feel like a caster isn't putting enough of, as you said, like their stamp in the game, uh, I feel like a lot of that comes from confidence, right? Just the confidence of being themselves and like, you know, really going into if they found something funny, really finding that funny or really like making a joke out of something without like having a second guess whether or not people are actually going to find it funny or something like that. Um, yeah, that, that, yeah. that at least is... is um, like I had that that problem as well, so um. yeah, I think I definitely do still suffer from that. Uh, I okay. don't really know how to improve that though, other than just like putting the time in and you know getting some higher profile stuff and trying to like work through it like that. Yeah, I think um, like over time, it definitely will develop more confidence for sure. But um, I also feel like in some ways, like the almost a fast track, it is just to to be able to get. <clears throat> excuse me some sort of like personal development that allows you just to not give as much of a fuck right like that i feel like that was um that's been one of owen's uh great strengths is that in in a way he just doesn't give a fuck you know he, he's like <laughs> well you know if people yeah. stop liking me that then that's okay because i know there will still be some people who like me and i can just you know go if like somebody takes over my spot that I could just go and be casting on my stream and people will, uh, there'll be some people who like watching that and like enjoying that. Right. So he, he just, he just has this sort of confidence and, and, uh, doesn't really seem to, uh, ever care too much about the concept of how well he's doing, I guess, as a caster. Yeah. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, so, really uh, do you, do you have really my screen share, right? To be honest, yep. a new, okay. another patch. Cool. That so, uh, do you care about draft at all? A couple weeks. I think they just wanted to send the heroes mm -hmm. off first. Really? No. That's why okay. Kind of I, didn't, in I didn't think so. I mean, uh, I feel like uh, for casters, it's like drafting is just something you have to do, right? But event, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once you go to land events, it's like okay, now that's no longer what you have to do. Um, Drafts. I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying Navi. Let's let's. All right, so and I like always a like. Draft is completely different to uh, I'm, I'm I'm casting a draft in a duo. Say that again. Hosting a draft is complete. Like hosting a panel when you're talking about a draft is like completely different to. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Talking about a draft in like an online cast with one guy. Like. By the way, I did enjoy your uh, your hosting last season when I was watching it. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. I'm collecting the wages, by the way. At the end of this tournament, I'm gonna be. <laughs> gonna All be right. Quite a bit, I think. If I lose this one too. So, yeah, what do you what do you say? You're going you're going for Navi here? Yep. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going I, Navi, baby. All right. Two o. 
can't believe I'm saying that. I mean, I would have thought that coming into the series today. Uh, obviously, Navi, Navi were the upper bracket team and have been playing very, very well. This? No uh, doubts about Navi that. But, you know, Nygma. it's Nygma. Okay. And Nygma are the team I've had to uh, to win the tournament. So I'm kind of going against myself here. But yeah, I, I think this game, these drafts, I'm, 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 I'm saying I'm All right. Let's, let's, let's so we're already forward. setting expectations. The, um, Predictions are always like, like uh, a fun topic to, uh, to go around. So Puts a little skin in the game, as it were. A charity bet? Let's see, yeah, yeah, you already yeah. have to donate to charity and you already have to make a tweet. Um, so what, what else do you uh, A bit more to charity then? Yeah, a bit more to charity, exactly. Let's... Alrighty. Thank you. Okay, so uh, like, uh, I, I always like checking what the, so the, mid, the, the way, intro gonna... is to they're a cast and, they're and into the off lane. i already feel like you guys are going pretty smooth it's pretty loose like it's that. fun like it's that. you know like you guys throwing out predictions you got a little Meanwhile, little nice back and forth 1437 Thieves just gonna start talking they, uh, about heroes oh, yeah. very defensive observer ward in their own jungle and they just spot out absolutely everything so really really great job as they now know they're completely safe to grab the bounties at the top and uh, they know what what nigma are up to um so do you like so uh when it comes to you the biggest thing that you wanted to improve on, right, is like hitting those moments harder and finding your own style, right? Yeah, and I think um, like finding better ways to work with Theban is quite important as well. Um, yeah. I think sometimes we feel a little bit disconnected and can't quite put our fingers on why. Sometimes we feel really good. With one another, I think this was one of the casts where we felt a little bit disconnected afterwards. Like, okay. We weren't quite functioning as a duo. Okay. Well, I'm going to say that uh, I feel like, judging from the, the cast that I've watched in the past of you, combined with the fact that you already have, like, hosting experience and stuff like that, like, I'm not really, uh, unless you specifically want to go over it, I'm not too worried about what you are doing in the down moments, I would say. Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel sure. like you're just a natural conversationalist in that regard, right? Sure. Okay. So starting off like the game starting uh, off with nighttime. Really interesting kinda... matchup as mind control plays into the doom. And oh, yeah, this is gonna be pretty hard for Iceberg. Uh, he's nice. so we're going over lanes. We're going over matchups. Of, like, zoning mind control out of this lane, it's, like, I always like um whenever casters provide some strong. sort of structure Top door, miracle, uh, of the laning right. phase. Very far under the tower by Roger and by General. So I like the fact <laughs> that we're doing that. I'm gonna just skip ahead into like more more team it's fight stuff. Mm -hmm. He's surrounded now. Let's see what they can do. They're getting on top of General. He's going to be the top. Okay. Oh, what to buy now? Sounds like a good moment. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ice armor. You want lead team fight, huh? Yeah, I think he'd be dominating the lane if it wasn't for it, but uh, very efficiently by General. His first rotation what of the game. And was that, 23? 23? I feel like that was a good moment. Like he was starting to get into some nice probe play. Frost armor down for a few hits. He's trying to finish the job. Doesn't unfortunately have many more bashes available. Come Doom. The crash, but the Doom comes out to stop him getting out the stun. And now he's going to be in some trouble. It's always what a fly takes him apart. Slada, well, he's trying to fight up into this, but there's nothing to be done. He is just going to lose his life to Weisberg. A great Doom from him. Just making sure he can't, can't give up that Slytherin crush and finding the kill. Well, Roger getting it's pretty top, but... Sweet All right, so I could definitely, I could definitely see the Ice the speed really thing coming into play, but that was a good moment for speed, right? Because even... you were naturally a little bit behind the action, because you were, you yeah, basically, you yeah, had like, like already a mouthful of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that in that case, like speed is a great tool, right? Because mm. you you but, managed to catch back up, which was really nice. Yeah, but do you, do you think I'm trying to say too many things at once when not all of it is necessarily needed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Um, that is definitely as long as this doesn't become like a trend that i'm hearing throughout the cast i don't mind that that one moment right because every caster is going to get uh, like they have a full sentence in their head that they're trying to get out and things naturally change yeah. but yeah I, I would definitely that that was a moment where it felt like there were too many things you wanted to say but it's not a big team fight or anything so i'm not i'm not concerned about it at all okay even having to rotate to make that kill happen. If anything, that was just a good good time for that tool to be used. General right. the courier. We'll take the yeah, for sure. My guy's currently uh, rocking up on about 70 strength pre-10 <laughs> minutes. Oh, 1600 HP. <laughs> Power treads. Yeah, yeah. This is insane. Okay, Tank, I know what to boy. buy now when I go off later with Bracer, bracer, bracer. so good. Dude, he's got 100 yeah, I do and not like miss five this. damage. I do not miss the bracer meta. <laughs> Flaps. Yeah, first, Chinese first one to take. Oh, <laughs> another bracer. Oh, look, guys, and, he's got another uh, bracer. He's surrounded now. Let's see what they can do. They're getting on top of General. He's going to be the target. And homing missile's going to connect and lock him down. He's under that tower. Miracle starts whacking away at him. We coming in as well with the magic damage. It is going to be enough to rip through his defensive. Not tanky enough. And Vichy's actually TP'd into this one. He's going to be all right as he throws down the strength adapter. Okay, so yeah, I can kind of tell that you basically had 
like um, you, it feels like you've got this structure of things you want to say that are two or three sentences long. Um, and as a result, he actually he he. It's almost like he dies too quickly for you. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it does feel like you're you're like a, a beat behind. Um, but I, I think the the way that you did it was still perfectly fine. Like you sped through it pretty quickly. You gave a nice recap. Uh, I feel like almost like recapping play by play is like an acceptable um, thing to to always do. So you know he you're calling him basically you know not tanky enough and and that sort of thing like a second or two after he dies. But I would I would say it's not that big of a deal. To do him on anything, but Nigma aren't leaving without a fight. So they're going to have to rotate in another hero. Lena's going to TP across. GH, they see him. They want to try and bring down some here. We could be attempting target, but he's pretty quick on this gyrocopter as he runs himself back across. Okay, the okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so there's definitely, there's a there's a lot coming out right now. Um, yeah. And I feel like what it, what is happening here is the pace of your speech isn't quite matching the pace of what's happening in this moment, right? Where... They've gone in and you built up like a nice little crescendo and you, you hit this like, oh, and they kill him and he wasn't tanky enough and all these sorts of things. And, and then what I naturally want to hear is a bit of down if there's, if there's not actually heroes being hit, you know. And so now they're retreating, but I feel like your pace is still kind of, kind of going up right here, like trying to still keep it going a little bit, you know. And I'm, and I'm just like, okay, but I, I kind of want to experience the down, you know. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, give... Uh... He's Give a little chance for that conversational tone to come back in. A general, yeah. The target, and homing missile's gonna connect and lock him down. He's under that tower. Miracle starts whacking away at him. We coming in as well with the magic damage. It is gonna be enough to rip through his defensive. Not tanky enough. And Vichy's actually TP'd into this one. He's gonna be alright as he throws down the strength adaptive strike to try and force back these heroes. Okay, so so you're slowing down here, really right? <laughs> that, that felt yeah, nice. Yeah. And we're like, we're beginning to slow That's down. Like Take control of this lane and stop them taking his tower. That's what he wants to do here more than anything. But Nygma, that, okay, so you you hit a nice slow pace, and then it felt like you were still kept on um, your your pace of words was still kept on going like pretty quickly. Even though I could feel like emotionally it was winding down, and that felt nice to me. General, he's gonna be the target. Mm, miss. Right. He's gonna be alright as he throws down the strength. Throws of down that like that that feels good to me. That's like oh that is this is the conclusion. This is the lull. And uh, I think it's probably because this TP and, uh, is coming in and they're still kind of like hitting the tower and stuff. So you're you're trying to keep like a little bit of pace. Maybe this is going to keep going. Yeah, do you feel it's better to throw it across to, you know, let them get a few words in? Because there could be a fight happening here, but we don't really know yet. We don't know what both teams are doing. Would it be sensible to throw it back to Thieb and then just be ready to jump back in if anything does kick off? No, I... If you're If you're comfortable with how... Uh, I guess that's more a question of how comfortable are you with your analysts being able to make a really concise point in that in that yeah. period of time. For example, like if I'm your co-caster, I can't do that. I'm imp I'm impossible, impossible at making concise points. As whenever I'm the co-caster, it's just it's terrible, right? But if you think that <laughs> Theban, um, if you trust him to basically make that read to make a small point. Um, you know, you can pass it off to him, but I would say no, like, um, most of the time I would keep control of this narrative. Um, okay. and I would just be slowing it down. And I, I basically, what I'm looking for is like that slow, steady stuff where I'm able to get to a pass off to him. Um, but I'm still holding control of it just in case, you know, for whatever reason, Nigma does back into things. And over to safety. Um, they're, not, they're not done on Nigma. They got some rotations top, and they feel like probably get a kill. Um, and so part of what I felt like in that last moment of the the pace was also um, a tendency for you to not want to have any silence. Um, do you agree with that, or am I just totally off on that? Um, I think maybe for this game, yeah, because like this this was a it's a hype game. This, yeah, I mean, this was a hype game. I know around this point as well, you know, there was discussion about the leagues and everything, and I was, like, really kind of... Um, I, like, I, w I was in a weird place at this point, because I was like, oh, man, like, I need to perform in every cast, because, you know, I want to make sure I'm getting on the DPC, et cetera, et cetera, and I let that get to my head a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, nerves were a little high for this one and a couple of others in this event, which is 
you know, whilst like, yes, I'd been grinding for like, you know, I'd done Epic League before this, and me and Simon had just done like tons and tons of casts. We'd done like hundreds of casts over so like the course of a few months. So we were feeling really good. Um, but then after this one specifically, like, I, I think that nervousness definitely fed into a bit of the, um, yeah, the not willing to let anything be silent and definitely just feels like we're very kind of strung up the whole time it doesn't it doesn't yeah. like the, the down moments don't feel very casual and relaxed okay because i because i kind of got that sense from the that the fact that we didn't really slow down in that last moment but then the fact that you you had a nice natural pause and theban didn't quite jump in i think as as quickly as because that was a you did a long bit so i feel like he should have had mm -hmm. some stuff ready to say and he didn't jump in in that moment um and so you started saying something uh, and i I think that is some of Theban's fault. Like, Theban definitely should be ready to jump in there. But I also think, you know, in those kind of things, like, you just had a nice nice team fight. Like, well, not even a team fight, but it was a pickoff. It was a, a feint of action, almost a team fight. And then, you know, we're going to go down into this lull, and now we're going to hit a pause. You know? And it's up to the analyst at that point in time to, to steer a bit of the show because naturally there was nothing happening. Um, so I think even if Theban doesn't pick it up in that beat, you know, that beat moment where he's supposed to like pause and then go, um, I think that you can still just let it rest there, you know, um, re rest, I feel like are, are underutilized in Dota. Uh, I'm not going to say silence per se, um, because that's more like, I don't know, baseball, but like having nice rest moments because Dota is kind of a marathon in that regard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Full high level on this clock too. Mm -hmm. But as far as like the things that you're saying and stuff, like, like all very smooth, so all very nice. Magic like I like everything that you're saying when it comes to the play-by-play -play moments. So I feel like it's descriptive. I'm getting, I'm getting, getting a story without necessarily needing to see it. Commentate on things which are now. Good. Roger, of course, Good. he is saving up for that shard. Wants to be able to grab that the moment it turns to. A lot could have happened. This side trying to bring down Weaver, won't be able to do so. There we go. They're coming over. Fight. They want to do something about speed things up. And okay, so I, I'm already liking they what I'm hearing here because I can tell that you can see a team fight's going to be happening, right? Roshan team fights, I guess, are, are, are always like perfect for a caster to show. So easy. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know a team fight's going to happen, and I feel like it's a great show of a caster and how they set up the story, right? And I can already yeah. like I'm your no tone fan. is already really good for that. It. There's a hook shot available. It's not the Do something about it. Either. Roger with the sun rays. Going to see what's going on here. Be able to figure it out. Bakura is going to stun up. What's the Phoenix? Now they're getting with the Silvering Crush as well. Oh, the Supernova with the hook shot is going to keep it alive. It's not. Uh oh, this is now looking real bad for the side of Nafi. They're going to lose two heroes straight off the bat. Always want to fly comes in to the side, trying to bring down Wee, but won't be able to do so. Now gets heroes all over his face as Smite Control takes another one down. Miracle's one getting all these kills though. He's got a triple kill currently. Vitrune was able to kill off Wee inside that pit, but now he's in some real trouble. He's got a Haste Rune and a Waveform to get himself back, and I don't think they could take chase much further than this on the side of Navi, but still. Um, Nick might gonna be fairly happy with how this one went down. Three heroes dropping, they do lose Wii, but they might be looking for more. Mind control, jumping forwards, Iceberg once again going for this target, but the shotgun comes out from Vichy and they weren't ready for we expect this one, but that said, Mind Control still alive. He will finally get finished off as Iceberg pops to BKB to get himself away. Has a doom available, if he can find the right PL, he will use it. Casting that Ice Armor and actually is getting into the front lines. He really he is with his BKB and this Frost Armor. The Nigma can't actually bring him down. We may be looking for a flank or maybe looking to get back into Roche, but now they are pretty low on HP at this point, so it seems very hard for them to keep on taking these engagements, but at the same time... Okay, so that was... Uh, I, I love the pace that you took to that, right? You let into the team fight a little bit. Like, I could just hear from your tone. You're kind of setting up like something's going to happen here. Um, I would say when... Um, you were still going a little fast when they started like doing that whole poke thing, but I love the fact that like um, unfortunately these things are always like um, the whenever they record off of Dota TV, the audio is always like a second behind, right? Um, yeah, uh, that might be part of it as well because I keep noticing like yeah. I, do, I, I do feel really behind on a lot of the calls. That could yeah. be some of it, but no, I, I could totally tell that um, when the hook shot went in, you have so this nice. Rush in the world either. Roger with the sun rays. Going to see what's going on here. Be able to figure it out. Bakura is going to stun him. What's the Phoenix? Now they get in with the silvering crush as well. Oh, the 
that mo moment right there is where the hook shot actually goes in and lands, but the audio is a, a, a bit behind. But I, I love this, right? You had a nice interjection, um, which was something that I talked about with, with Aries. When something surprising or interesting happens, like I want that to, I want to feel that no matter what it is, even if it's not a word, just a ooh is, is a nice like, oh, the, the team fight changed in some way. Is it going to be enough? And so I really like that. And then that part, the, cause I feel like I'm actually getting your personality in here, right? I, I feel like a bit of emotion of like, oh, it wasn't enough. Uh oh, like the uh oh, and then this moment, real, bad, with the of is real like bad. The fact that you were able, like that's the thing is that whenever I'm listening to these casts, it's not the the fucking um, the race of words coming out of Caster's mouth that stand out to me. It's this. It's the the uh oh and the real bad. Those are actually like slower moments, and those are the things that stood out to me that I'm like, oh man, like I felt something when I'm I'm watching this team fight. So uh, that's the flavor. Well, yeah, yeah, it's great flavor, and I and I feel like um, it is showing off your personality. So this. You hit a nice bit of speed there, and then the fact that you slow it down all over his face. Like I, I was when I was hearing this, I was worried that like, uh oh, we're just gonna get into a speed battle here. But you slowed it down, <laughs> and it's but but it's nice. Yeah. Like you can get speed yeah, as yeah, long no, as you get personality afterwards, good. and yeah. so. I, I, I love the fact Another that you one. said like, all over his face. That was that was a nice line. Currently, Vitrin was able to kill off Wee inside that pit, but now he's in some real trouble. He's got a haste rune and a waveform to get himself back, and I don't think they could take chase much further than this. Okay, on the and side you slow it down. V, but still, um, Nigma gonna be fairly happy. I I would have loved it if you just hit a a bit of a pause there. Um, because you did a really nice job slowing down, and I felt like almost in a way your nervousness said like oh. You, you were sort of ran out of something to say and you did, did a filler like uh and then you just kind of kept going i i would have loved if you just kind of kept slowing down the speech even further and, and just to get went back, into the moment and then we could have had that build up again but all around like the the pace uh, of what you did with the closing out of the team fight and then the reinitiation is all really good but that said, Mind Control still alive. He will finally get finished off as Iceberg pops to BKB to get himself away. Has a boom available. If he can find the right PL, he will use it. Casting that Ice Armor and actually is getting into the front lines. He really is with this BKB and this Frost Armor. The Nigma can't actually bring him down. We. Yeah, so that, I mean, uh, the fact that you're calling out, you also slowed down a little bit in the middle of that fight as well. Like, if he can find the real PL, he will use it. You recognize v -tune's not necessarily in danger. Um,. I would have loved something uh, when he did the the fake bump of the doom, but right, but it's like we're not n necessarily always going to be able to uh, to call it everything out, right? Um, Little thing, yeah. yeah but yeah, I, I would have loved a, a like. Oh, he almost did it. <laughs> he almost yeah. got him. But yeah, I think that that was like. Maybe looking for a flank, or maybe looking. I, I love the pacing direction. that you took to this. Pretty low on HP at this point, so it seems very hard for them to keep on taking these engagements. But at the same time, they don't have that much choice. Right, so We're just nearby. down for a second team fight, I'm sure. Don't. Miracle, as soon as he got the Zephyrzel, they went on the aggressive, they got the kill onto the Doom. Actually, Navi were waiting like about 30 seconds and Morphine was going to finish E-Blade and they were going to make a play first. But Nigma managed to get the drop on Navi instead and create this insane amount of chaos. They still want to play on this Roshan. They want Navi to come out and fight them. Nice space, 1437 sets you up nicely. Yeah, yeah, comes well. through onto Wii, the prime target found, but he didn't actually get off the blade on time. Doesn't make a difference. They will still bring him down, but Clockwork will be traded for this. Roger doing his best to keep him alive with the Sunray. Not quite enough. And now Nick Mad, they're into Roche. They want to keep on trying to take him down. The longest for a Shan we've seen in a while. Level two hates now. Continues hitting away at him. Can they finally finish the job? They want to clear out these snakes first. Are they finally backing away, Navi? I don't think so. They've got a BKB available on Iceberg again, so he's got to rock himself up into the pit. Questions are always good. I like when people ask, um, I'm not even sure if rhetorical question is the right word, but like, are they going to back away? We don't know. They're not. And so I like, I like when you lead into that fight. The shackles are out. want to fight. Needs to cancel. Does do so with the LSE. Can they get up the doom in time? The BKB, none of it's available. He's going to lose his life. And now Miracle looks on towards always want to fly as well as they lose mind control in response. Vtune hanging out around the edge of this fight, but he doesn't have any mana. He's actually... 
He just ferried himself out some uh, clarities, but it's a little bit too late as this fight is already looking a little bit over for Navi. They lose a couple more heroes. Nigma just getting the slightly better trades through these engagements again and again. And nice. back into Roshan we go, folks. Okay, so I, I was hoping you were going to, to give me that storyline bit, which was, I think... I'm not necessarily paying the best attention, but I'm pretty sure Navi just lost two fights in a row, right? Yeah. And, and I wanted yeah. to hear that storyline bit. So the fact that you you covered it, Navi, you're just losing these fights again and it's again. Not ending. That's exactly is what it, they want. I mean, don't have is to it too out. much like the trailing off at the end? Is it taking a little bit too long for you, or is it like tidy enough? Because I mean, to me, it does sound like a little bit long after the fight's finished and then, you know, just a few sentences too many, maybe, you know, maybe I can get to that conclusion a little bit quicker and then just let that pause come in and, you know, let the dust settle a little bit. Obviously, you can pick it up if he wants, but just let the, the fights kind of, where everything that just happened sink in, right? Would that be better? Yeah, I mean, that then again comes down to your synergy with your co-caster and how much confidence you have in them being able to cover the potential hype moments if they do happen, right? I, I don't blame you at all for keeping control of the cast uh, because it's very obvious that these team fights are, are happening in like waves, constant waves, right? So you, you're you both, you're doing the build up, you've got the the hype, you, you are letting it go down, but you're keeping control of it because you don't necessarily know if it's gonna happen again, but it is gonna happen soon. So I think, you know, you hand it off to, to Theban, uh, earlier um, you can make it a bit more concise if you want but again that's going to be about whether or not you trust Steven to both be concise in his thoughts but also be able to set you up if if the next team fight happens and he's still trying to talk right so um, yeah I, I don't really blame you at all for doing that. But yeah, if you if you feel like days. you can be more concise and give more room for, right? to the him, um, you know, like I, I think having do. more back and forth, it's like, uh, do you watch basketball at all? No. Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, even if you don't... Actually, okay, let's talk about uh, European football, um, okay. right? The the I think some of the fun funnest moments um, it, that aren't like points actually being scored right is when a team has a really fast back and forth of passing right where they're, they're just right. able to go one two three four you know like going up the field very fast or back and forth you know juking the uh, the uh, defenders or what have you same goes with basketball when they're able to pass back and forth and basically make feints uh for you know a potential layup or a potential shot um but they're just like moving the defenders constantly around i think the same can be applied for a really good casting duo that the more you're able to kind of flawlessly pass it back and forth between each other um the 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 higher tier i guess of of a duo um of like commentary that, that i feel like i'm getting um so yeah, if, if you can keep it shorter and pass it back and forth between the two of you, that's great. But um, not you can't al always rely on your analyst to, to do that, I guess. Right, okay, got it. Give us a free rush or you come and fight us and that's what we want. Like this Phantom Lancer with this hood and the fusion, he feels so amazing at this point in the game. He could just keep farming, but I think Navi are gonna hit those timings that will allow them to kill the PL. But right now, he feels like he's the strongest hero on the map. Okay, Wants so Roshan's still up, so we're still going to have another fight. <laughs> well, it's back it's up. they're going to go actually. back at it. They're not going to stop. It's been a vicious few minutes of gameplay, and we think it's going to kick back up again pretty damn soon. That's good. That's good. I, I wanted you to, to take that point that he was talking about. Thieben's basically saying Nygma is going to keep on forcing this Roshan thing because they either want the team fight or they want the Rosh. So uh, I He's want you to be able bit, to bounce off of that point and build point. into the story of what is the third Roshan attempt, I think, at this point in time. If you can even, like, Just number it, I, I actually feel like it, it, oh, if the number starts Johnson. getting high, right? 30, 4, yeah, 5, somewhere up there. Yeah. Tin finds Alina. Alina's gonna take it down Alina. very quickly. The that said Miracle will oh, be again. Another look in towards the Doom. Yep. Doom gets off the BKB, but he's getting his health taken off. Just a quick, he needs to find a Doom target. Uh, Nave will be able to turn around. Doom's up the PL. And meanwhile, v and he's stolen the Jericho of this form. has been able to get off a ton of damage. And now with the Okay, card. okay, okay. So, you're... I think you're trying to cover too much. Right? Um, 
So what I told Ares is that the the biggest sin of FPS commentary is just reading off the kills that are going off on the top right or top left, right? The this person yeah. kills this person, this person trades out for this person. The the greatest sin in MOBA commentary is naming off spells. And I feel like in a way you wanted to cover too much there. Right, V tune turning into a gyrocopter and getting those shots off. That was cool, but you had already called the impactful play. The impactful play was he got Doom on a Phantom Lancer. And I, I want this story now to be about he gets the like it's it's um under the last second he gets off this Doom on the Phantom Lancer, right? And I want to know if this'll do something. This sacrifice is actually gonna result in something big here. But in your head, you're you're thinking Doom going off, Supernova going off, and the flat cannon, which obviously is like a big thing on screen that like, you know, you see it all over the place. So naturally you want to say something about it. Um, but I think honing in your thoughts a little bit, we don't need to, to talk about every, even if it's an ultimate, we don't necessarily need to talk about every spell. Um, being able to talk about this crucial moment. What was the big spell that was used? Well, Doom, and it got the carry. Um, and I, I wanted you to be able to basically hone in on that rather than talk about anything else that's happening. Yeah, it's kind of like the team fight has its own narrative and you want to focus on the main points of it, not not kind of go off the, you know, yeah, do, okay, Supernova's a big spell, but in this instance, you know, it's just helping them kill the carry and the carry's only susceptible because of the Doom. So yeah, yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, in that regard, it's something I can practice on for sure. Yeah, I think I, I think almost every Dota caster, LD, I think was uh, usually really good at honing on on very specific things. Um, and I feel like I try and do that, but I all the time just get, go into you know big spells, big spells, big spells um, instead of what I want to do, which is hone in on uh, the important thing that happened. Dooms up the PL. Great moment. V tune turning into the gyrocopter though is like. Stolen the gyrocopter's forms, been able to get off a ton of damage, and now with the rocket collapsing onto the PL, V tune gets on top of him, brings him down. Morphling is now. There. Still though, you you ended up uh like bringing it together nicely though, like I I stopped it, but uh before we could get to that moment, but I do think you like brought it all together really nicely. Very very scary as they bring down two big Enigma heroes. The PL is out of the equation, and that means the Morphling will reign supreme, but the Doom did fall as well. Now, actually, Nygma, they're going to go for this. They actually managed to get the Hex off with him still in the Agi form. He does not have the Strength Morph going, and they will have the damage to bring him down. Clockwork trying to do something to buy the space for him, but just puts himself in an awkward position that will get the kill somehow onto Mind Control. And Kuro's getting pretty low as Blame well, you. but uh, won't be enough to get the kill in the end. So, wow, this game is just an absolute brawl. These guys are really, really just tearing pieces out of each other at this point. It is not... Okay. So I like the emotion that you're putting into this, that this game's like, uh, I mean, th this game's just crazy. They're just constantly fighting. Um, but I think you were yeah. leading into a really nice moment there, where which was, um, I wanted to hear something about the narrative of Nigma had been forcing these fights because they felt stronger or whatever, like they wanted Navi, and Navi finally won a fight. And I think you were kind of getting to that with the Morphling, you know, PL's down, Morphling reigns supreme, Roshan's still open. Like, this is a big opportunity. This is a big window for Na'Vi. And I wanted to you to be able to speak into that. But then something happens, right? Like, oh, shit, Morphling got jumped on. And I would have loved if you had taken Na'Vi's side of this and, and, and been like, oh, what, like, what a blunder. Like, they had an opening. You know, like they had this opportunity. I would have loved to, even if you're wrong, uh, I would say like having the confidence to be able to inject that bit of personality into the team or players um, uh, of basically them, even if it, you don't say something as harsh as blunder, right? But like they had an opportunity yeah. and Nigma finds, you know, it slaps it out of the hand or something like that. You know, like like that, that I felt like that was a great uh, moment for like a nice bit of storytelling of like, they finally did it. Oh God, no, they didn't. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like oh, that's kind of a uh, pattern where after the team fights, you know, it's, it's just like, I don't really 
the, the, there's a lot of superfluous stuff being shown after the team fights. Like I can't kind of switch out of play by play mode and into narrative mode. Yeah, I think that's something I need to work on. Like it would be good if I could just like recognize the actions over, conclude the fight, explain how that's affected the narrative in terms of the bigger picture of the game, and then you know either pause, let it go to the burn, or talk about the next thing, or you know move on. I think it would be quite important. Yeah, no, I I love the way you described that. Out. Right, play by play. Mm -hmm. uh, mode and the narrative mode if you can work a bit more narrative into the that play by and play like it, it almost doesn't matter who else is dying and what other spells are being cast because like morphling reigns supreme but now he's dead like yeah. oh god like nothing else really like big picture nothing else really matters when the morphling is dead right that it's like yeah. a, a yeah. big opportunity so yeah i think you're absolutely right in that um, your original um, critique of yourself, which was that you're trying to fit too much into your play-by-play, -play. if you take some of that out, then you'll find space that you can very uh, very easily work in some of those narrative points that you do have in your head um, that they're just not getting out fast enough. Um, you'll find space to be able to work those things in if you do take out some of the, as you say, like superfluous play-by-play. Um, -play. So yeah, I, I, I think you're 100% on point there. Um, but I, I think that's very very natural, right? It's like um, for casters to have two modes, basically. Fun. Yeah. This is so insane. I mean, but yes, I, I would say that um, the, the best the casters that have like the biggest point, moments he's so um, with that doppelganger and that hook. Are, are working and their narrative. I mean, think about all the big moments, right? The, um, the play from LD, Liquid is doing it, right? That's a big one where he's working narrative uh, into like narrative is actually supplanting play by play of what's going on in the screen. Right, because the big picture is Liquid is winning this game. It doesn't matter how they're winning this game. Liquid is winning this game. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a disaster. I guess is uh, a bit of both in some ways, but yeah. I just see Nima go back at it again when Slaughter's alive. They're not gonna stop. Really, are not. Give me another stop. Roshan fight. They want that Rosh? They want to fight. <laughs> Keep burning the mana of this morph and the Doom. Iceberg, he has to be careful. He needs to pop that BKB before he gets hexed up. So when he gets too low and he pops the BKB, he's still gonna die and get pressured up way too much. Speed it up a little bit. What a wild game we've been having so far. It was a pretty, pretty quiet lady phase, and then all hell just broke loose. Everyone just started tearing chunks out of each other. This rich and you know, still hmm. got taken, by the way. What I would like to see. No, man. I want I, I, I like the, the fact that, uh, you know, it's it's not something that's going to make me, like, laugh super hard, but I do like the, the bit of humor you put into that that kind of shakes up what has been a pretty tense game. Not to scale up his flat cannon. Oh, right. Yeah, that too. I want him to, like, just leave his flat cannon, like, level one. Okay, he went to level two. Just leave it there. Because when the Morphling turns into the Jarl, he's going to feel very disappointed when he can't <laughs> hit everybody five times. You know? I and he's a magic build anyway. That. I completely agree with yeah, that. Just don't touch our flat cannon. Magic build Jarl. You can just ignore it, don't scale it up, and then when the morph transforms, sad boy. Definitely, I like that idea. Let's we'll see if we commit to it. It's the five head place. It is indeed, it is indeed. At the same time, you know, the farming potential which Flat Cannon offers you uh, might be tempted, he, we, him, especially considering he's got Kuro on his team offering him the Bloodlust. It could be too tempting. It's we. He's he okay with it. I think Slaughter is like the real one that you want to keep Bloodlusting and the Phantom Lancer. I like the fact you actually um, argued with Ethan about that. Yeah, yeah, that's something we've, uh, well, I mean, I've, I've been trying to get better at, you know, like, even even if my points aren't going to be right, like, you know, maybe 10% of the time, or even, maybe even less when I'm talking to an, actual, an analyst, will my points ever be right? I think it's fun to try and make my point anyway, because if I think it, then I should say it, you know, it, it's yeah. like, the fear of being wrong is so fucking stupid, because being proved wrong is just an opportunity for the cast to like take on another dimension and like Atlas gets to prove you know that they know what they're talking about a little bit better and like it's just kind of you know i i i, I i've enjoyed doing that recently it's just kind of embracing the fact that i'm not as smart as my co-caster yeah no I, I i definitely i really like that um i i like the fact that you're able to take that that leap um because you know like in some of these situations you're gonna end up the, like you said, the 10% that you're right, well, I mean, that's going to look really good on you. People are going to be like, damn, this guy does actually know what he's talking about because Steven knows what he's talking about and he actually had a good point. 
Um, but yeah, the, the fact that you're willing to have a bit of back and forth, um, I think is, is great. Like, we there to just do the magic right, that makes, that gives me some flavor to mirages. your guys' uh, I mean, it's relationship. It's just the fact that Morphling won't have this big spike in the mitigation. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Bro, well, Sean. guess what Bro, it's time Sean. for. Bro, Roger Sean. has managed to pick up the Aghanim's Shard and now has Fire Spirit upgrade, so he's got these permanent Fire Spirits oh, so just stupid. constantly refreshing themselves around. It would have been really good Aghanim's for the last uh, engagement, yeah. but uh, sadly didn't have it in time. And now he it's now the turn for Roche. Yeah, I don't think they are going to be letting this go free somehow. Uh, that's Did they quickly. Go yeah, they need right, let's, uh, back to normal. To get over here pretty damn fast. Smoke up. They know. Miracle. They know now. Illusions into the pit. They know it's going on. Now, what is the play? GH comes in from the side, dropping the snakes, get down the vision, and trying to bring down the Phoenix straight away, but he's just going to lose his life so damn fast. BKB, no hesitation from V2. Yeah, egg. Always want to fly dives in the back as we jumps him. They managed to get the Doom down, actually, onto the Gyro to control him up. He's playing Cat and Mouth of Iceberg. We want inside the pit. The Supernova will come crashing down. Now, Nigma. Well, they finish off Wii, who was doomed up, so no real surprise there. And uh, Miracle being jumped by V2 in his own. Okay, so I would say that, um, so you're doing camera work for this game, right? No. Oh, you're not. Okay. No, 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 no. This is OGA, so it'll be their own in-house guy doing oh, it. Okay. Um, well, uh, do you follow what uh, his, his camera is? No, I think we're in game doing our, like looking at the game ourselves, but we do have a feed which we can look at. But okay. it, as I remember, it was about like half a second behind the actual live time so right. it wasn't good to watch it at all it was vmix so it's, it's yeah, just like yeah. half a second behind and it's a little bit low quality as well so it's way better it's just watching game yeah um so my thoughts on that was i, I um would have loved more information on what was going on inside the roshan pit that's more on the observer um than you like i i didn't really know um how fast Roche was going down in their attempt to do so. Um, so I would have loved to hear something about that, but the again, that's, control him up. that's not necessarily on you. Do Listen to it again. Yeah, they need to get over here pretty damn fast. Smoke up. You can tell we're they looking at the Roche pit and our camera is like, into the pit. Yeah, yeah. get over here pretty damn fast, you know? And yeah, I think I mean, um, aud audibly saying, like, they need to get over here pretty damn fast, that's good. If you could just let me know, like... Are we at, like, how fast are we talking about? Like, 10 seconds? They, they, Roshan's going to die in 5 seconds? Is it a half health? 3 quarters health? Um, that That's always, like, a nice um, audible tip, but... They know it's going on. Now, what is the play? GH comes in from the side, dropping the snakes, get down the vision, and trying to bring down the Phoenix straight away, but he's just going to lose his life so damn fast. BKB, no hesitation from V2. Yeah, egg. Always want to fly dives in the back as we jumps him. They managed to get the Doom down, actually, onto the Gyro to control him up. He's playing Cat and Mouth of Iceberg. We want inside the pit. The Supernova will come crashing down. Now, Nigma. Well, they finish off We, who was doomed up, so no real surprise there. And uh, Miracle being jumped by V Tune in his own form. Zero Blade comes out onto Kuro, just throwing out a couple of spells. Gotta be careful as V Tune is running out of mana. And Miracle's gonna come in and try and actually get the rest of it as Microdrog gets on top of him as well. They've got the anti armor down, Sunray. Is it gonna be enough to keep him alive? Looks like it is. V Tune, he's not taken under damage at this point, but he has had to go full string. Not gonna offer much this engagement, and Miracle's not done. He wants to keep on jumping into the small but gets a waveform up to the high ground. Meanwhile, the clockwork's gonna be an ample distraction. Nick will turn their attention towards taking down General. They will be able to do ample that. distraction. Comes out from always want to fly, holding him back a little bit longer, but do they care is a question. Clockwork with the buyback. Does he have a hook shot? Yes, he does, but lands on illusion. Quite unfortunate. Can he find anything more? The answer is no. Nigma holding a defensive line. Very Yeah, okay, so the the speed again. I, I would have if you would highlighted that. The does he have a hook shot? Yes, he does, but it doesn't land on you know, it lands on illusion instead. How unfortunate. You know, I would have loved for you to be able to hit that. How unfortunate. And if nothing even comes of this next couple of seconds, be able to talk about what could have happened if it had landed. Um, but, you know, like, I, again, I feel like you take away a bit of the, the speed or the bit of, like, how much you're trying to fit into this, and you'd be able to hit... Um, like the the that Very harder nicely, just using uh, these spells narrative to get the vision up onto the high ground um, the rockets and all that jazz and they will be able to keep their hero <laughs> did you mind. almost say shit <laughs> 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 I want to hear that very, again. Very nice it sounds like all that jazz. 
<laughs> All right, maybe you were going to say stuff. I can't tell, but ja jazz I'll, was I'll, a good word. I like that. Yeah, it'll do. It'll do. I'm pretty sure I was about yeah. to say shit, but um, I mean, I don't even know why I wouldn't because OGA don't care about that at all, but sometimes that's... Uh, that you know that radio training comes back to me because that was my my degree was in radio studies so sometimes those lessons come back to me like oh can't swear like, hey, yes i can motherfucker <laughs> well, to keep their heroes alive and now everyone is back in the game it's going to be a full five on five when gh arrives back into this engagement on this shaman smoke again smoke up immediate they want to keep on going they don't want to slow down oh it's going to stop this it's whenever roshan actually got taken <laughs> but it's not happening <laughs> Done by the shaman. They take the morphling, and now they can go on to everybody nice, else. Nice. They turn their attention to General. He's gone as Perfectly well. Perfectly done. Clockwork out for the count. I forgot have to blink himself away. This Roshan and this fight will belong towards Team Nigma. Perfect jump in from DH. He does that it again worked. with the Aether, with the blink. Jumps in, gets a hex, gets the shackles, and just kills off the morphling on Falaji. Beautiful stuff. That's how you. Okay. Um. So uh, this this is a sin of mine is uh, doing play by play recap of the same moment you just did to like reemphasize because you thought something was really cool. Um, I I would say that's something for your analyst to try and leave him the space to do so. Um, okay. Whereas you probably could have hit a, a bigger narrative point, um, which is. You know, we've been going back and forth on this Roshan for, for a while now. And I would have loved, a, you know, a bigger hit of like, and it's finally theirs. Like, after all this time, Nygma's finally going to be able to take that Roshan. I think you, you hit it nicely, but then you, you were hitting it nicely. And then you went and did the play-by-play, -play, like, recap, basically. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean for sure. Um, which is which is something that I you want to leave, I think, for your analyst more so. But the hype that you brought to this moment was great. You recognized there was like the definitive like uh, moment that is going to break Navi and Nigma finally gets to the Roshan. Towards Team Nigma, perfect jump in from right, right. If we if you just closed yeah. out right at that moment and didn't start off with the perfect jump in and that sort of thing, you just lead out. It's finally theirs. Close out. Steven takes a beat. Then he does the the you know re team fight analysis uh, of what happened. Then that would have been like a perfect closing out of of what was a very very good team fight call by you. Great hype. Like everything was really good. And then if we do we just close it out. Would have been like masterclass. You would have been like damn that felt awesome. You know, but I think again, you're a bit of the the nervousness or whatever is getting you to keep talking. You know. Yeah. Shut but. The fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I mean honestly, like um, I I think you're already on point with um, you you kind of know what um, what you can do to improve, and I think like. Once you're able to to take some of that away a little bit, you're gonna find naturally that like you as a person is coming through as as the microphone. You're doing less of this, um, the, the less of the mechanics of play by play, and you're actually working more of your personality into it because you've got personality to spare. Like you're an interesting person, you're a great conversationalist, so it's gonna come through. You just gotta like focus less on the the me calling things correctly and quickly and in the technical impressiveness of that like just focus less on that and then naturally that'll create space for your own personality to to shine through and i think you'll just you'll you'll be a lot happier with what's coming across okay that's thank you yeah that's that's very interesting all right. Well, uh, I, I think uh, I'm going to call it there because I was going to try and keep it shorter than last time. Did you did you feel like... Um... Well, the Roche never died. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's going to keep going? No, no, I think... Oh, okay, okay. I was like, I was like surely Roshan's actually... Because that's what I was all waiting for. I was waiting for your grand conclusion, the wrap-up of, of Roshan actually dying. But, um... Yeah. I think it's... Uh... It's all over. Yeah, no, that's that's really. I mean, my two biggest takeaways, I think, for me is, uh, you know, wrap up and focus on that big picture a little bit more once the action's actually over, and yeah, just chill out and have fun with it, and let my let my own self come through a bit more. And I think those are two really big points for me to uh, take going forward. All right, awesome. 
I'm. Uh, cool. I hope. I hope this was. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it was. It's uh, that certainly shed some light on some things which I hadn't thought about before, or uh, didn't realize were as big as issues as uh, as they were. Well, you know, some things which I maybe wouldn't have been focused on improving before, but definitely will do now. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think I think these are generally very small things. Um, but I, I think naturally, as a caster, you you've got like you've got everything there is. So. Uh, it's more about just perfecting what's already there. Um, so I think you're a very solid play-by-play -play caster. Uh, I've always I've I always enjoyed listening it. to you on a cast. So, all right, I actually uh, I gotta go. I realized I had a last-second meeting pop up. So, um, all right, enjoy your meeting, sir. Thanks again. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks, see you around. thanks for uh, thanks Bye for then. coming on. I'll see you around.